Hello, my name is Niall McCone and we're going to take a look today at understanding digital transformation frameworks. Now, we've understood that digital transformation is not necessarily about technology. It's about how we lead our organizations. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of being able to progress innovations quickly and rapidly in order to add competitive advantage or change to our organizations. To put that into some form of structure, this is what I believe digital transformation is about. It's where strategy is used to create competitive advantage. Technology does not. Strategy creates competitive advantage. People and our culture of innovation is what allows us to sustain that competitive advantage. Technology, which is all important in communications, is simply the means by which it's delivered. Some organizations like to look at the technology and let it force them into a particular direction, be inspired by what the technology can do. But the high performing digitally transformed organizations typically look at it from a purse perspective. They tell the technologists what they would like it to do and they lead it and let that be done. How do you inspire a workforce? How do you bring all of the challenges together in one particular place? How do you stop yourself defaulting to tactics when somebody always wants just to fix the problem? You do it using digital transformation frameworks. Now, at the highest level, we are going to look at it like this. That's my bed of technology. Technology is going to be ever present, but let's stop talking about it. Technology will be the underpinning of everything, but let's just assume it will be there. Where most organizations fail and where the great high performers succeed is that they address it this way. They start with their digital business strategy. They use frameworks, which we'll come across in a second, down at the area of digital business strategy. Then they look to make sure that their people understand what's happening within the framework that's been used, the diagnosed problems, how they're going to perform to help them overcome the diagnosed problems, and their people are given the capacity in order to make transformation and change happen. This helps to inspire the culture, and of course, communications is very important at this point. Most businesses that simply do digital don't have to realign. They just simply apply technology on top of what they're doing. They've got a website, they've got Facebook and Twitter, they're happy with what they're doing. Most highly successful transforming organizations have to actually physically realign their organization. They have to reposition their logistics network or have, have to take on new departments or close existing departments. They have to have the experiments and data to make sure that the business alignment combined with the right culture and in line with the strategic planning all work. At that point, we are then able to understand the capability gaps in our team. What is it our team need in order to perform what's needed to execute the strategy? And only then should we really be considering innovation because innovation should be focused at solving strategic challenges. One may be that we're not competitive. And that's fine, but identify the areas that we're not competitive and try to see if innovation can help solve that problem. And finally, when we have innovated, when we have created a transforming organization, we will find that the competitive advantage that we've created or the change state needs to be articulated using more advanced methods of communication. Of course, delivered through technology. Let me put this in a different context for you before we actually take a look at a strategic framework for delivering strategy. If we help to understand that the digital business strategy is part of the main cog of what we're trying to do, but it will not work unless we get cultural alignment and organizational alignment and innovation to come and help us. Then we have to get technology cog turning in order to help create the change state. Then the change state will lead to happier staff, where they have both autonomy, mastery and purpose because we've redefined what they're doing. We've got better leaders who happen to have measurable progress. They happen to have data-driven decision-making and actionable strategy. And of course, we've got happier customers. They're more engaged. They find what we do more interesting. They're co-creating in many cases with us. And it's a collaborative workforce. So if that is the outcome that we can achieve by using structured methods of digital transformation, where do we start? Go back to the slide that we had before. This bottom bit, digital business strategy, that's where we start. The world's most advanced digital business strategy planning framework is the seven principles of digital business strategy. First of all, we have to plot out where we are now and then compute 
the potential journey that we're going to go on. This is a leadership issue. This is not a technology issue. This is thoroughbred leadership issue and the leaders do not need to understand technology to lead digital transformation. Each of these moves have very defined set plays of challenges that must be overcome and resources that are going to be needed to help overcome them. This simple instruction map allows us to see where we are now and where we're going and better still, the changed state as we move is quite often represented in data that we can see in our organisation. So when you hear people saying data is really important, it is, but only in context in helping us understand our journey. Of course, all of these questions that arise as we move from one position to another must be addressed in a formal way. And the formal way is to identify what we want, know yourself, what the customer wants, if there's evidence, what marketplace already has, who are the competition and can we elbow them out of the way, and what resources do we have to make this happen. And we're finding increasingly, in particular with large organisations, they under-resource what their strategic ambition inside Know Yourself is. This is calculable before the project starts. Ideally, we're looking for where this heart sits, in between Know Yourself, your customer, your marketplace, and your resources. Get that bit defined along with your journey. You tend to have strategies that lead to much greater success as we go through. Each of those little points have a set of markers and those mile markers start to end up becoming projects and the projects become tasks and now our entire organisation understands the personal role that people must take, the personal responsibility in order to create the change state. And the tasks can quite often link with data. So we know if the task is achieving an outcome. Way too many times people applaud the completion of a task when what we should be applauding is the completion of an outcome that the task was designed to do. And of course, in the digital world, that's much more achievable. So within the seven principles framework, as you would expect, there's a software called Direction that allows you to actually plan all of this and do all of this and work together collaboratively to make sure that everything is lining up as it should be. That is my whirlwind tour of digital transformation frameworks. I hope it helps you understand things a little bit more. If you want more detail on the seven principles framework, there is a URL on your screen right now, go there and you should be able to see it. I thank you for watching.